Let me show you how you can create this fire slash burning effect in Photoshop. I took a photo of my arm right here just to show you this effect and first thing that I did is extracted the arm out of the background for two reasons. First, to be able to change the background however I want and the second reason you will see in a moment. So before I do anything else, I want to create a new layer, new adjustment layer. I will go with black and white and just make the arm a little bit darker like that and invert the mask, control or command I. Okay, and then I will put everything into group, control or command G and with Alt or option, I will use this layer mask that I made at the beginning to affect this group. So here I will go and use any brush that you want. I will use my custom made dust cloud smoke brush and you can get this brush for just $1. This set of brushes for $1 on my website. I will leave the link down there in the description. So I will just paint everything here like this and I will use this brush for these imperfections here. Okay, like, like that maybe. Okay, maybe less here something like this. This will not be affected maybe a little bit more by the fire. Okay, like like that. Now we will need some kind of a texture, either a rock texture or maybe a burning wood texture or whatever texture you think is good to be able to make the effect that the arm or whichever part you're making with this effect looks like it burned out. So I will use this one. And by the way, this finished PSD file with the texture and everything with my arm, you can download on my Patreon. The link will be down there in the description. Okay, I will make it smaller. But before that, I will put it in a group, Control Command G, and again, use the same mask. So see why this is important. I will use the same mask to put it in a group and then Control or Command G and make it smaller and position it where I think it's cool, right? there, for example, and I will put this first hue and saturation adjustment layer to desaturated, okay, and then put on the rock texture this layer mask that I made for my arm, okay, this one, and put the rock texture into the multiply blending mode. So see, it's already cool, but I want to modify a little bit the finger part. So I will go back to normal blending mode, make a copy of this control or command J, and just uh, grab and uh, use the hue saturation for that copy too. And yeah, move it on the fingers. I just want the fingers to have a little bit smaller texture here. Something maybe like that. Let's see. Yeah, it, I think this looks really nice. It's a little bit better for the fingers right there. And now let's see. Okay, we can now merge everything with Control or Command E and then rename this Rock Texture and we can put it back into Multiply Blending Mode. Alternatively, you can go with Overlay, Soft Light or Hard Light Blending Mode, which one you prefer. I will for now go with uh, this one and this is really cool effect. Now what we need to do is to make like this is a burning from inside out. So everything where these cracks are, the gaps are, we need to make some kind of light there. So how to do it? First, I will go with a new layer all the way above everything and fill it with the black like that. Then I will create another layer and then I will create a gradient map. So gradient map here, we will modify here we will put some kind of a darker reddish tone. Here we will go with some brighter yellowish tone, something like that, orangey tone. All right, that's perfect. And this is the same setup. Let's put it in a group and put the group into screen blending mode. The same setup like I did a few years ago with my magic trail effect tutorial. So this is exactly the same. What I will do here with this, I will go like let me show you here with white color and just paint inside these areas. So instead of manually painting here and having trouble with this, let me show you a cool trick how you can do it. First, I will go right here to the channels, go with control click on RGB channel and go right there. Let's create a new layer just for, for a test. So a new layer above everything, right? And I will create a layer mask with that selection. So this is the selection and I will fill this with white. It doesn't matter. Just fill it with something, some color. It can be, it can be even, 
I know some yellow tone. It doesn't matter actually. So what matters here is that I will go right there, invert the mask, control command I, perfect. And then control L to load levels into the mask. And I will just go like this, see, all the way until I'm seeing just these gaps. So let's see, maybe something like this looks decent. Mm, let's see, maybe, maybe like that. I will press okay and just use this same mask on this layer right there. Okay, I will release this um, temporary layer. And right there, I will go with my brush and just with white color, so white color, I will just paint in. And now I'm using a brush with a pressure sens sensitivity on. So that means if I'm pressing harder, I will have more brighter tone like this. If I'm pressing, pressing lighter, I will have darker tones. And that's really important and really cool with this trick. If you don't have a pen with uh, pressure sensitivity, you can do the same with the mouse. But instead of uh, pressure sensitivity controlling with the brush, you can go here with the opacity controlling with this slider right there. So now I will just slowly paint in these details. Okay, I will fast forward this. Okay, this looks cool. And what is really cool is that you can add a hue and saturation adjustment layer right at the top and change the color of this if you want any other color. I don't want that. I'm just showing you the possibilities. And uh, this is really, really nice effect. I'm not done yet, don't worry. Now we need to add some kind of a fire photos over the top of everything. So I just went to unsplash.com and got some photos here of the fire. So this one, I need to put it in a screen blending mode and you can see that is not completely transparent. Just go with levels, control L or command L on a Mac and just go with the black until you don't see any more of that black background like that and play with this. Just be creative. I will go and warp it a little bit like that. Maybe let's see, maybe a little bit like that. Then rotate it. Put it right there and use the layer mask to mask out part that I don't want to be visible with black color. So I don't want here on a finger. I just want right there, a little bit less here. Like I'm holding the flame practically. So let's see. I don't want here. I don't want there. And also I will unlink this so I can move. Oops, I can move this really. Let's see, maybe, maybe here and maybe even smaller like that just a little bit of the fire here and there and again i will just fast forward and add few more flames in the scene so you can create something like that this is just a fire that i added here i can put it in a group and name it fire and that's that. And also what you can do, you can create a new layer and go to linear dodge blending mode and use some darker red tone, something like that, and really soft brush and add a glow, add a glow all around, like all around these parts, slowly take your time. And you can make it really, really nice by just adding that glow effect with that or let me show you another trick how I like to do it because I have that plugin in case you don't have it you can do it manually if you have go with Toniric and just add a glow right there and then you can merge everything into one layer go to camera filter and here do a final color grading and contrast etc and this is the final result. As I already said, you can download this finished PSD file. The link is down there in the description. It's on my Patreon. And if you want to learn how to create amazing photo manipulations, check out this video right there. See you there. Bye-bye.